Thunder from Down Under. Never been to the show, but great marketing. Awesome name, tons of billboards. Not gonna lie, basically now, every time I think of a show in Vegas, that's the first one that pops in my head. Not Cirque or David Copperfield or anything like that. It's the Thunder from Down Under. Got a really amazing dinner plan today. So a really cool hot pot place actually opened up on the strip in the Venetian Hotel. And it's not just any hot pot. It's like a hot pot combined with a, with a show, combined with like animation. I've only seen stories of this on Instagram. It just looks so cool. Like the whole table's animated. So before that, I'm gonna just hit up some restaurants I've been wanting to go to. And this one right here, carved. Always wanted to come here. Can I get a porchetta sandwich? Is that the best thing on here? Uh, anything else I should try? Okay, let's do that. Really nice. They gave me some tri-tip soup too. Try. So this thing has some potatoes, red pepper, corn, carrots. I was chewing the vegetables, which are really soft. And then I put a fattier piece of this meat in my mouth. I think it's just as soft as the vegetables. But of course, with that delicious fatty flavor. This is really good soup. This just got me more excited for the actual sandwich. Yeah, thank you. While waiting for my two massive sandwiches, I'm just sitting here um, chomping down free soup, chicken, rice, some peas, carrots, corn. I try not to say too many good things about chicken because I feel like they get way more love than any other meat group already. If you don't believe me, let me just ask you, is there a Kentucky Fried Beef? There is not. I might like this more than the beef soup. Texture is amazing. Rice is soft. Pop and sweet corn is great. Chicken is wonderfully tender. The soup itself, though, so much flavor. And it's really aromatic because they added so much herbs in here. Oh, this is great. I honestly never liked chicken rice soup before because I really didn't understand it. I'm like, is, is it a soup? Is it a congee? I'm all confused. You made the chicken soup with the chicken that's you that you cook here. So you don't just like grab some random leftover chicken pieces. That's Paul, by the way. All right, thanks buddy, I appreciate it. Take care. On the hood dining, Vegas style. They're house-made hummus and pita chips. All right, before I even put this in my mouth, I, I feel like I didn't discover a local gym, but this is a local gym. Everything is made in-house. The soups were already mind-blowing. Excuse me while I Google up a uh, local wedding chapel here in Vegas and see if they'll just make this official. First of all, the pita. Toasty on the outside, warm and soft in the middle. The hummus. Hummus is creamy, it's garlicky. Just a warning, if you start with this, I know I got a couple of probably really amazing sandwiches in there. I can't, I can't put this down. Putting it away for just, you know, maybe a little while until I, I, I tried the sandwiches. It took so much willpower. Sandwich number one, the tri-tip. Oh, that is pretty. Bun, toasty on the outside, pillowy on the inside, tons of arugula, caramelized onions, and this is the tri-tip. And he was right. This thing is a monster of a sandwich. I'm thinking, just kind of weighing this a little bit, it's at least a pound of sandwich. That's a good beef sandwich. Look how much they give you on top of the vegetables. One, two, three massive slabs of beef on this just most perfect roll. The caramelized onions brings just a tad of sweetness. The arugula is there really to just kind of offset fatty parts of this beef. I love everything about this. I love the beef, of course. I love the caramelized onions. And this is 100% fresh bread. They just made this. Day. I don't know if they made it in-house, but this is fresh bread. And I kind of feel like I'm in an episode of Food Wars right now because I was honestly just eating and talking about it. Then I looked down and over half my sandwich is gone. That's like the highest level of food enjoyment. It's when, when you're eating your food and you look down, you're like, has someone else been eating my food? Has someone else been taking bites out of my sandwich? That's when you know you're eating something truly delicious. All right, this is actually the one I've been looking forward to. So this is supposedly their best sandwich. This is the porchetta. Again, loaded with arugula, some chilies on top. Look at the amount of pork you're getting with the sandwich. You can see the herbs and spices on the meat and a lot of fat in here as well. And here we go. 
crispy skin. This is where the magic happens. This is pretty much the essence of the sandwich. I'm just gonna go spread the essence around. And it's all sitting on top of some sort of glaze. Again, tons of spices there as well. You almost gotta cradle this thing like a baby. Your life is not complete. This needs to be part of your food loving life. Calling the sandwich delicious would be like calling the members of Twice kind of cute. Trust me, they're not just kind of cute and this is not just delicious. This could start many of my food loving dreams. First of all, let's talk texture. We already talked about how good the bread is, but now you got that added crunch from the skin. Just listen to this. You hear that, right? It's not a loud crunch because that means it's not overly hard. It crunches and then it melts. The fat just smoothly covers all your taste buds, slowly melting and just teasing your tongue. And all you want to do at that moment is just take another bite of this. The sauce is also a work of art. I taste olive oil, I think a little oregano, tons of herbs just highlighting the already extremely aromatic chunks of roasted pig. And then you get to a fatty part, like this piece right here. I'm putting this place, especially the sandwich, on the Vegas must-eat list. Now, if you'll excuse me, I, I need to go have a nice moment with the sandwich and again, maybe find a wedding chapel or something and much later on maybe have a bunch of little moments with it a few minutes later hey, it's me again uh, i just want to show you guys what what, what it kind of looks like when i'm filming on the hood of my car so finish my i finished my sandwiches and i'm just like eating my pita chips on the hood of my car and there's a little shopping center right by the road and there's just people walking by <laughs> all the time and just staring at me like, what's this idiot doing? Just talking to himself, stuffing his face on the hood of his car. But yeah, that's basically what happens after the cameras go off. I just stand here, I'm like. <laughs> admiring the traffic going by and eating my food. I ate here last time I didn't film it. So I got like a giant mochi and a cream puff. And it's also shares this eating area with this like Japanese burger place right over there. I was trying to get a Japanese burger before I ate my uh, pastries and dessert, but there's literally 30 people in line for that burger. So I'm gonna just sit here and eat my pastries and uh, see if afterwards the line is shorter, get a burger. Oh, that was a good cream puff. The outside shell tastes like it doesn't even exist. I don't know what's lighter. The outside crust with that delicious cream. Mochi the size of a steam bun. Oh. I now know what this is. It's a daifuku mochi. Hmm. It's basically a strawberry wrapped in a mochi, stuffed with cream and red bean sauce. The mochi wrapper itself is actually pretty light. Fruit is nice and refreshing. It's pretty good. I personally do like the cream puff better. And as I'm eating this, I'm just kind of constantly catching myself eyeing the burger place. You said Jack Chan's lost son, right? That's me. That's for Jack Chan's lost son, right? Yeah, for Just want to make sure. That is a delicious looking burger. Now, they have a lot of different types of burgers. They got like a Tamago burger, which I thought about. They also got a really spicy burger, which I also considered. But I just wanted to try just a regular, their classic burger. You know what this reminds me of? Like a bigger version of an In-N-Out burger. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of. And here's why. The thing you notice right away is that toasted butter bun. I mean, the bun is buttery and toasty both on the top and on the bottom. The patty, the patty is really juicy. The vegetables, incredibly fresh. I now understand why there's a huge line for this burger. This is a delicious burger. And the patty is also cooked to a perfect medium, too. I just became a huge fan of this place. Sesame, black sesame macaroon. Mm, they're really good with their baked goods. Ah, 
This is actually a really good location. You go get yourself a Japanese inspired burger and then go get yourself some Asian pastries and outdoor seating. A little windy though. All right, rest of the day, I'm gonna go back to the hotel and hang out a little bit. And then I wanna go to a little park that I always travel to whenever I'm in Vegas called Red Canyon State Park. I'm hoping that wind dies down a little bit uh, before I go, so I'm gonna go maybe coma out a little bit. And then dinner at 8.30. What does that big rock look like? Kind of like a deformed stormtrooper. Welcome to Red Rock Canyon. This is where I go every time I come to Vegas. Love this place. So beautiful, especially at sunset. This is what I do to burn off calories between meals. I already ate a lot today. I got a huge dinner coming up in a few hours. Gotta try to stay active. Sunset here is so gorgeous. You know, there's actually a story about these red rocks um, in Buddhist scriptures. Legends from Buddhism says that in a lot of places on earth, there are these really red rocks right next to really white rocks. And the legend was that a long, long time ago, there was a huge battle between the gods and the demons. When the god's blood spilled upon the earth, it turned the rocks red. And when the demon blood spilled upon the earth, it turned the rocks white. And that's why a lot of these places you see really red rocks right next to a lot of really white rocks. Interesting legend, huh? I think this is the first casino Chinese hot pot, like at least on the strip. Okay, I gotta work out before this. I'm ready, eat. Pot. This is the first fine dining hot pot place in, I think in the US, and definitely the first one in a Las Vegas casino. And this thing is on the strip. This is like prime time for hot pot right now. And so each night you come, there's a uh, chef tasting menu or there's a a la carte menu. And this thing, $148 a person. Let's see what's on here. So you start with a salad, then there's truffle tofu roll, wagyu, takai, and there's a special swan cake. Then we have the main course. You can select the soup base. All right, this is getting a little overwhelming. So we're just gonna cover this course by course. And they start you off with a hot towel. And this place is not your typical big pot that's shared, which is probably good this day and age. So you have little pots. Swan cake is here. Let's see what a swan cake is. Paul with a swan cake. Whoa. So this is our swan cake. That's beautiful. Duck meat and green onion. Duck meat and green onion. Beautiful. It's like watching a dumpling ballet. The swan butts has sesame. This is so elegant. This is looks too good to eat. Like, look how pretty. I feel like I'm about to eat the ugly duckling after it grew up. All right, don't hate me. This is purely because it's kind of awkward to fit in my mouth with that with that neck. Hmm, that's a little sweet. Oh, 
Paul's back. Hang on. What you got, Paul? So this is our second appetizer. We call it one bite. Outside you have a five Miyazaki wagyu churro. Inside is guagua. On the top, a little bit fresh wasabi, tobigo, and edible golden fish. Wow, a five wagyu with four gua inside. And this is what inside of the swan looks like. Stuff full with minced duck meat and scallions. For those of you who really like that swan, I'm sorry. This had to happen. The outside is so flaky. It tastes like a curry pastry. Inside, smoky duck meat with that great sesame aroma. That is a beautiful swan. And this is the second appetizer. Look at this. This is the Wagyu Takai. So it's Wagyu beef on the outside. Inside is progua. I think some caviar on top and some gold leaves. I expect this to melt very quickly. I know the swan is beautiful and all. That's the star. Wow, that's good. A little hit of wasabi, some popping fish eggs to change the texture up a little bit. Personally, I'd rather just everyone give me the gold leaves that you're about to eat so I can just form it into like a, like a nugget or something and sell it. Cause like, really, eating gold? I think it's a little wasteful. I'd rather spend it, but it did make it look pretty. And for something that tastes that good, it deserved that golden crown. All right, my soup base is here. Wait, which soup base are we getting? Golden chicken soup base. That is one of our signature soup base. We use cream and chicken to cook it, and the cooking time is about 12 hours. Creamy, Creamy lobster, lobster. For, for hot pot. For hot pot. So, uh, I feel like, I'm, 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 I feel like I'm eating eating hot pot at the Monopoly guy's house. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, would you like some creamy lobster hot pot broth? Like, well, that's excessive. Okay, lobster and shrimp. Wow. That kind of looks like a lobster bisque. And then this is the chicken that's been cooked for 12 hours. I've actually had this when it was at the Flushing Hot Pot place. All right, now for the spicy soup base. Like a Sichuan spice. Yes. Look at their color. Thank you so much. Also, I just want to take note of the utensils here. This is like the prettiest hot pot eating gear I've ever see in a hot pot restaurant, look at this. Like bronze chopsticks. I, I, I feel like I'm in a Korean restaurant right now. If anyone is trying to poison my hot pot broth, I will know. Oh my gosh, Lingostein? Oh, that is so beautiful. Oh, I love this. I feel like I'm in a hot pot place that's owned by Jeff Bezos or something. Wow. This is great. That's delicious. It's, yo, I mean, this is jam packed full of lobster flavor. Wow. Thank you. I feel like Poseidon is like, my hot pot shall be lobster. Wow. Oh, the spicy broth is excellent. The chicken and the lobster are more mild flavor, obviously. That brings the kick. Now oh, my tongue's all tingly. It's like my first kiss all over again. Okay, so I kind of neglected some of these food items. This is the surf and turf. So looks like torched king crab and wagyu over a little bok choy. Mmm. Yeah, that's fresh. Oh, it's so good so far. Mmm. Mmm. Wagyu with the mushroom sauce? When you eat something like this, you feel like you kind of just want to chase it with some soup. And then you can just do that. Just go ahead, take the soup, and drink to your heart's content. I never had something this Zuckerberg y before. That's, that's my new word Zuckerberg. It's like Mark Zuckerberg. It's hot pot restaurant where everything is just caviar, lobster, and swan cakes. Check this out. Oyster, truffles, and caviar. I usually don't even like um, raw oysters because it usually tastes like ocean snot to me. Like, like the ocean sneezed in my mouth. That actually had a really nice texture to it. And the truffle didn't really overwhelm anything. It's a nice mild flavor oyster. And even with the truffle, nothing's just like kind of going too crazy in my mouth. I like that. I like it when my oysters are peaceful and not crazy. This I am really excited about. The last time I had a great lingo sting, I remember was in Spain over a year ago. And they show you the certificate, make sure it's real. A lot of fake Wagyu out there. You, you gotta be careful, okay? Mm. A little citrus, all you need. The meat on these things are so clean and creamy. Mm. 
This is like ocean's candy. Naturally sweet. I'm gonna go make my sauce, which they brought to the table. Yes. Chicken pepper and lamb is about 15 seconds. Whoa, oh, ho, ho. Chicken combo. We have um, Shikoku oyster with black truffle, lobster sashimi, pink uh, salmon, yellow tail, and some scallop as well. That is too beautiful. Ah, it's all about the presentation. Yes. Make it smoke. Have you ever seen a hot pot where every single thing that's brought to you is smoking? Check this out, guys. Ugh. Yeah, it's a paddle of lamb. That looks so delicious and sort of dangerous. And for all of you guys who have uh, been in fraternity, this, this might conjure up some unpleasant memories. So come here and replace those bad memories with something delicious. This is the first time in my life I'm eating like a, like a beef sushi. I don't know why, like, it always kind of fried me. That's delicious, especially a nice mushroom. This is gonna be something special. Look at this. Buttery 8.5 Wagyu on a salt block. This way you don't need to add any more salt to it. Convenience, and it's fun. I love tongues. Well, let me specify that. I love cow tongues. I love it in a hot pot. I love it barbecued. Thicker, the better. Especially Wagyu cow tongue. Next level stuff. The texture is just so different than other parts of the beef. More chew, much better beef flavor. As much as I love thinly sliced pieces of beef, having a chunk, it's just that much juicier. A5 Wagyu beef in lobster hot pot broth. That definitely tastes like a bite worthy of a king. Mm. Definitely. Try the lobster on its own before you dip anything in a spicy pot, especially the A5 beef. Just taste it without even the dipping sauce. The flavor is just extraordinary. I'm already looking forward to the noodle part of this meal where after all the ingredients have soaked into this lobster broth, this thing is only just gonna get better. And then that in a delicious bowl of noodle soup. I think my night is gonna end very well. Whoa cheese in this beef ball. This is a cheesy beef ball. Hmm. Cheesy beef ball. That was my nickname back in high school. The meatball is handmade here. I'm just gonna dip it in a little broth. Get the meatball, especially that cheesy one. I'm telling you guys, cheesiness in terms of food and people, always better. All right, noodle time. In this place, they make their own noodle. These are wide rice noodles. And this will go into the lobster. This might be the most impressive bowl of noodles I ever made in a hot pot meal. With noodles cooked in lobster broth, with beef cooked in lobster broth, with an egg poached in lobster broth. Oh, oh my gosh. Would you look at how perfect that is. Oh, I don't know, it's creamier, the egg with lobster broth. That might be my best hot pot egg yet. I think usually I like it a little runny, but cooking it like this, it tastes like a ramen egg, you know? Please do this when you come here. It, noodles cooked in lobster broth? This is the best bowl of hot pot noodles I've cooked so far in my life. 
It's, oh my gosh, that's, okay. So lobster broth, after you finish eating the hot pot, you cook some meat in there, you cook some vegetables in there, all that great flavor boil into the broth. It just tastes like the best bowl of surf and turf noodles you ever had. Poach the egg like I did, so the broth gets even more creamy, the noodles get even more creamy. I wanna say I'm impressed by myself for, for doing this, but I, I think the credit goes to the broth more. But I did post that perfect egg. I don't know who gets more of the credit. This is just on another level. They should sell this noodle at like noodle restaurants. Well, this place should just start selling noodles. Like these. You know what flavor is really standing out with this whole thing? I mean, lobster, yes, but you're also tasting a lot of the innards, like the tamale, the, the, the miso of the shellfish. That's all in there as well. All right, Enjoy. dessert time. Thank you so much. Check this out. This is like one of those uh, raindrop cakes almost, but on top it has shunja, which is these like hawthorn pieces of hawthorn candy, clear jello. It's actually pretty good. I wish I ate this before my meal. Because what hawthorn does is it makes you hungrier. So I hope like I just didn't eat a big meal, go home and start feeling hungry all over again. That'd be not good. All right, food is done. Now let's go check out the show. So they have a room that has a, a 5D, I'm not really sure what it is, but let's go see it. Wow, what, this is a huge banquet place. So you get the imagery on the tablecloth. Well, that is so cool. A little dragon flying. It's like walking into like a Chinese water painting. So beautiful. Oh, that's pretty cool, especially the last part with the whale. It's, it looked real. Like, I mean, when I was looking at it in the room, it doesn't look as 3D as it did when it showed up on camera, which was crazy. Anyway, that was truly like a Vegas hot pot experience. It's exquisite. It's very polished. It's definitely the most fancy and fine dining-ish hot pot experience I've ever had. All in all, super unique, delicious hot pot experience. So if you're ever in Vegas, go check it out. and. Uh, don't forget about the lobster noodles and the egg. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.